Hi everyone, welcome back to uh, Netgear and Ingram Micro webinar. My name is Laurent and I am your host for today. So welcome, today we want to talk about the next generation of switching for uh, 10 gigabit ethernet, PUE and uh, audio video over IP. So there is a convergence between audio video and IT right now and this is happening using 10 gigabit ethernet. So during this webinar, we want to explain how you will be able to enable your clients to transport 4K UHD video with flawless quality and zero latency at uh, one third of the cost of traditional AV. So we'll see how Netgear engineered these 4300 switches for true AV over IP. So I am the presenter, I am the product line manager for, for switches and managed switches at Netgear. As always, feel free to ask questions and uh, we'll be uh, answering them during the presentation or afterwards during the uh, QS session. Uh, also, uh, we want to uh, keep that webinar short for 30, 35 minutes on track. So if we do that, we we'll then have some time before QA for a rapid hands-on so that you can get a quick view on the uh, web interfaces and, and common line interfaces for Netgear switches, how we enable AV over IP. So uh, without further ado, welcome again and let's go over this M4300 convergence webinar for Netgear and Ingram Micro. So as a short introduction, uh, this is the Netgear SMB team talking right here. As you may know, Netgear, we have three main business units with the consumer grade, home and retail products with Wi-Fi, all that. We have a service provider, a business unit team for uh, uh, carriers and SMB. So our goal uh, for small and medium businesses, all our portfolio, all our efforts, uh, you know, are directed to uh, small and medium enterprise companies for less than 500 employees. And uh, uh, we uh, uh, are well known on this market for 25 years now because our solutions are engineered to be really simple, easy to use, easy to deploy and easy to manage. So, um, if you didn't hear yet about the uh, revolutionary cloud insight management solution, we call it smart managed cloud insight solutions, please urgently go to uh, insight.netgear.com. We have a brand new cloud solution with uh, uh, switches and access point and storage. And it's not only cloud uh, management, it's, on, it's also a great app on uh, Android or iPhones or tablets so that you can manage location-wide networks using uh, cloud technologies. That's very unique and that's a great insight solution at Netgear. Today, we are going to uh, talk about switching. We have a lot of switches in the portfolio, ranging from unmanaged to uh, fully managed with a lot of form factors. Uh, for the sake of today's presentation, we'll uh, only address the uh, M4300 series for AV deployments. But uh, you may know that at Netgear, we have a lot of other products, including wireless products. If you see, on the right side of that slide, this pair of blue and light gray uh, OB Pro uh, products, you should also uh, get to know them because OB Pro is, a, is the greatest and latest 802.11ac solution for mesh with the tri-band unique solution, and that's a great wireless solution. Last but not the least, on the right-hand side, you know that Netgear today carry a large portfolio of uh, high performance and really secure storage products. So, AV over Ethernet, that's today's topic. What is going on with AV nowadays? Well, AV over Ethernet is coming, you know, but it's not coming easy. And uh, there is a transition that is inevitable right? Because everything moves uh, from analog to Ethernet to IP, but the pro-AV world, professional audiovisual industry, is a holdout. And today we want to understand how, why, what are the reasons, and what is probably 
the solution for that. So, AV market for professional AV installations rely still on old technologies called matrix switchers, HD-based like technologies that are very complex, very expensive, very old, and they are definitely not IP. So how does it work? Well, you have a complex matrix switcher in the middle, which is not really scalable because that's a fixed uh, capability. And if you want to upgrade such a uh, uh, transport between your sources on the left and your uh, displays destinations on the right, well, you need to uh, most likely change or upgrade the matrix switcher. Uh, that's proprietary, so uh, uh, either Questron or other uh, uh, HD-based uh, technologies, but you cannot really mix and match se several vendors. And all that is really complex. It requires hours, hours of uh, uh, programmation. So uh, what is going on with, with Ethernet in the pro-AV world? Well, uh, uh, in the, the professional AV industry, or vertical, I should say, a lot of things already moved to Ethernet. Control protocol. Uh, pretty much all devices are controlled through Ethernet already. Audio also is a good example with uh, AVB, but now especially Dante, Dante Audio. Dante is almost everywhere. Audio has definitely moved to the, to the Ethernet. But video over Ethernet is still, you know, uh, just happening. And there's no clear uh, winner on that market as of yet. I'll show you how Netgear and the SDVUE Alliance is trying to standardize this uh, transition. But right now, a lot of solutions are out there, and there is a lot of trade-off uh, to make. So what's the holdup? Well, uh, Bandwidth itself is probably not the problem. The problem is the shared bandwidth, because most of the current video over IP uh, uh, technologies rely on one gigabit per second Ethernet speeds. And you'll see that with one gigabit per second, you don't have enough speed, enough performance, enough bandwidth for quality AV and IT. So for your education today, well, when we want to explain about AV over IP, we need to know, you know, what is video first. And uh, uh, when it comes to high, high definition uh, video at a certain frame rate with a certain number of bits per pixel, well, you, you get a video bandwidth across the wires, right? So that's already excluding the HDMI overhead. Okay, so because HDMI overhead, we don't need that when, it, when, it, when we take the video and transport that video over a, another media than the HDMI cable. But just excluding the HDMI overhead, you can see that 1080p already goes beyond the one gigabit per second bandwidth. And when you get to the 4K, you're definitely over one gigabit. When you go to the 4K HDR, 4x4x4, four by four by four, you already have 12 gigabit per second. That's a lot of bandwidth, a lot of bits. So now we start to understand why it's so much of a challenge when it comes to reduce that video bandwidth down to the one gigabit per uh, second uh, threshold. So before we actually jump into the uh, actual AV or IP technologies and methods and solutions, we all need to agree on a couple of uh, uh, terminology. So first, of, first one is a codec. In any AV or IP installation, you need to select what is called a codec. That's actually a pair of encoder and decoder solutions. And in these encoders and decoders, you have algorithms that will actually take that video in and code that video into packets. And on the other side, that video will be decoded from packets to back to the video. So compression usually happens 
in as part of a codec. We'll get some examples later on in today's presentation. And uh, well, compression usually, you know, brings a lot of latency. If you look at this uh, uh, OSI model, usually the codec is at the layer six. That's the presentation. That's how the application is uh, uh, happening. So after the codec, bandwidth. Well, for us network guys, bandwidth is very well known. But uh, well, on the AV side of things, take it simply. That's the, the quantity of bits per second or gigabits per second or terabits per second that a, a stream needs. Uh, that's the quantity of data that we will put onto the network. Okay, so uh, well, from uh, the, the beginning of uh, Ethernet, we started at uh, 10 megabit per second. We transitioned maybe 25 years ago to uh, fast Ethernet, then to gigabits, then to 10 gig. And now, uh, well, it goes all the way up to the 100 gigabit per second Ethernet in data centers. So uh, uh, widely uh, available now are 1 gig and 10 gig networks almost everywhere. Latency is the third, uh, uh, you know, uh, notion that is really important for AV over IP after the uh, bandwidth, after the uh, 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 codec. Uh, latency is the measure of time between the source and the destination. When you have a video source, such as a video server or a, a, a streamer, and uh, you have a transport solution that will carry that uh, video all the way down up to the final display, the latency is actually the delay, the period of time that will uh, happen in between the source and the destination. And usually, uh, latency, you know, is really depending on, on the, the compression because compression takes a hell of a time. So uh, usually also we know that, uh, well, the, the, the human eyes are uh, aware of such latency during a video when it goes above the 50 milliseconds, okay? 50 milliseconds is when we start to actually realize that there is something wrong, that the video is late. Why? Because, well, it's uh, actually a couple of video frames. We can see that. So latency usually is bad when you have, you know, real time uh, requirements. The last one is actually easy because it said that we know what it is when we see it. Quality. So the quality can be understood how, you know, the, the, the destination, how the, the display uh, uh, um, is compared with the actual source. And you know that uh, you, you can have some issues with quality depending on the video technology. And also uh, this quality can be measured in professional environments. What is getting measured is artifacts. And artifacts are those little issues with the video quality that happen when you see too much of a compression. Because compression, you lose information. And uh, because of that loss, you will realize that your video at the end uh, got artifacts. And artifacts are a big of a problem when this is magnified on a very large display, right? So that's probably the reason why, for instance, uh, Christie uh, Digital, uh, one of the other founding member of the SDVU Alliance, uh, 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 chose SDVU technologies. We'll see that because, well, compression is bad for large venues and large screen displays when it comes to video quality and uh, artifacts. Okay, so. In any kind of AV or IP technology, there is a dilemma because you just can't obtain uh, a low bandwidth AV or IP technology with a low latency uh, and with high quality. It's, it's, it's rather impossible. We call it the codec triangle because any uh, 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 technology, any engineering team will have to make uh, decisions and trade-offs based on the quality, the bandwidth, and the latency. Why? Because if you want to reduce the bandwidth, 
you got to compress a lot, right? Remember, uh, 4K HDR is way beyond 10 gigabit Ethernet, 10 gigabit per second of actual data. Uh, so uh, when you compress that, then you get a hair of a latency because compression consumes CPU power and uh, 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 issue delays. So quality and latency are actually on the low side when we compress in order to gain bandwidth. So that's what we are going to review. Uh, for your information, and, and believe me, it's, it's very high level, but uh, in order to understand how latency behaves and what are the uh, typical solutions on the market today for AV or IP, uh, you need to have this quick overview between those uh, families of codecs. So intraframe, interframe, and pikes or pipeline. What's that? Well, first, intraframe codecs, it's a very popular family of codecs, of uh, software encoders and decodex, uh, uh, decoders technologies. And one of the uh, most well-known uh, example on the market is called MGPEG 2000. MGPEG 2000 codec, you have a lot of AV over IP at one gigabit per second that will utilize MGPEG 2000. And the problem with that is that, well, uh, you will uh, encode each single frame one by one. So each single video image, each single frame will be compressed using that codec. And uh, that will actually fill an entire one gigabit per second uh, video pipe. One gigabit per second is the uh, actual speed after the compression, but the latency is really important because uh, based on the hardware, uh, you cannot get much better than 50 to 150 milliseconds of uh, uh, delays. And remember, the human eyes are capable of detecting that as long, as soon as it's above 50 milliseconds. So uh, the latency is really much visible with MGPEG 2000. The quality is actually so-so. Uh, uh, it's considered as medium. You have some uh, images that will be better than the others, but overall, it's uh, uh, not too good and not too bad. So it's called medium, and the bandwidth, well, is one gigabit. A second big family, very large family of codecs is called interframe. And uh, uh, here you have very famous examples such as H.264, you know, famous for movies and uh, video files, and HEVC as well. This time, multiple frames are uh, grouped together and uh, the compression actually is uh, gaining time and space. Actually, uh, H.264 and HEVC are very good in terms of bandwidth because it can go as low as 10 to 50 uh, uh, megabit per second, so very low bandwidth. But the latency all can go to the roof because the more you will compress, uh, the more uh, milliseconds, uh, hundreds, if not thousands of milliseconds will be needed at the encoding and decoding uh, stages. So latency goes up to the roof, and the quality is very good for video, like movies, but it's actually really bad for fine prints and a whole lot of other patterns that are usually you know, found in uh, uh, pro-AV applications. So the third family, uh, of a codec is called Pyxol Pipeline. So this is actually different, this is new, and uh, this is used by the SDVUE technology. And to date, this is the only technology that use it. This time, we actually are going to compress when we have to compress. Remember, 4K HDR, 12 gigabit per second of video data, uncompressed, native, excluding the HDMI overhead, if we want to fix that into a 10 gigabit per second Ethernet uh, speed, for instance, we will uh, uh, use that. But the Pikes of Pipeline method is radically different. In fact, um, the, uh, uh, the, the compression uh, is going to use frames or lines 
across the video, and that's very close to the actual HDMI process itself. And by doing that, the latency is actually very uh, uh, short because it's measured in microseconds. So that's a very fast processing. And the reason is that this technology is aimed at 10 gigabit per second only. So that's a very light compression uh, on the, on the, on, uh, uh, using uh, those lines and uh, actually lowering the, the latency to the bare minimum, which is microseconds. So totally uh, invisible for human eyes, for instance, okay? So that's where codecs can differ depending on their nature. Now, we understand that when it's not pixel pipeline, 10 gigabit per second compression, if any, you're down to the one gigabit per second speed, right? And at one gigabit per second, well, anybody that is going to claim uh, such a 12 to one compression when it goes down to 4K video without latency, well, it's uh, maybe uh, something that people can say, but something that people just can't write in, in data sheets because it just doesn't exist. When you compress using any codec available on the market, can be MGPEG or uh, H.264, latency goes up to the roof and the quality, the quality is down because you will get for sure video artifacts, okay? So that's the downside of one gigabit per second compression. Another uh, thing on one gigabit per second methods for AV or IP is that, well, many uh, uh, one gig per second AV or IP uh, solutions out there will claim that everybody already got one gigabit networks and that it's easier because it's already there. The problem is that, well, that's another lie because AV and one gigabit Ethernet networks just can't be mixed together. Just go to a IT admin and tell him that, well, you will inject uh, maybe 10 or 20 or 30 uh, one gigabit per second videos throughout his network. He's not going to be happy about that. Well, why? Because there is not even uh, enough space left for typical current uh, IT applications over one gigabit per second networks, there's almost nothing left for video distribution, okay? So uh, it's absolutely uh, uh, impossible to use an existing one gig network in order to, you know, uh, have that AV distribution happening through it. So, of course, we could then dedicate a AV network, right? But by doing that, you just build another AV over IP network. So it's not convergence, right? It just doesn't converge because by doing that, it's another separate network sitting next to the, to the main one. And uh, still at one gig per second, you will, well, depending on your requirements, suffer in terms of latency and also in terms of video quality. So the good news is that there is a solution on the market today. There is one solution called 10 gigabit Ethernet. 10 gigabit per second networks is the solution where AV users and IT users can live in harmony, okay? Why? Because with 10 gig Ethernet, well, you have enough bandwidth to carry a whole lot of uncompressed or lightly compressed video and still get a lot of bandwidth available for the rest of the network. So that's what we are going to discuss right now. AV over IP with Netgear, AV over IP with the SDBUE Alliance is based on 10 gigabit ethernet. And by doing that, we increase the flexibility because instead of a complex uh, uh, matrix or matrix uh, switcher in the middle, you get a good off the shelf, cost effective 10 gig switch, right? And this actually lowers the cost big time, but also it can scale because you can assemble a lot of different switches to uh, uh, provide more uh, 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 
IOs, more inputs and more outputs, more sources and more displays destination. So that allows really for a true uh, audio video and IT convergence. And the good news is that the Netgear 43 line is optimized, pre-configured for AV over IP. We'll see that rapidly. So this is a preview for that technology. This is the uh, SDVOE solution. You have, as I said, a uh, uh, capable, robust, proven 10 gig switch as a backbone for such a, a video transport installation. You got all your sources on the left that you are used to with the uh, camera, servers, uh, uh, Apple TVs, name it. And then you will attach via HDMI, maybe, uh, a encoder to every source on the left. You will packetize that video using 10 gigabit ethernet, goes to the switch, uh, goes out to another port somewhere else on the network to those decoders, still using 10 gigabit ethernet, and you have the native quality, zero latency video available now on your displays on the right hand side. The beauty of it is that it's really software driven, meaning that you don't need anything else to do all those applications, including a picture and picture, a video walls with bezels compensation, a smart TV application with a USB support for KVM and so on and so on. Everything is actually managed via a controller, via a API, via software. So that's what we want to uh, show today such AV over IP technology is made available, easy, cost-effective within the SDV Alliance. Uh, still on the Netgear uh, side, well, because the backbone is a 10 gigabit switch uh, uh, by Netgear, you got this uh, lifetime warranty, and that's very important for AV, because in the AV world for pro AV installations, there is no such lifetime ever. And also, uh, when it comes to other switch vendors out there, such as the Prestige, Cisco, or HP, or Restar, or Xtreme, or all these guys, well, the lifetime warranty usually stops when the product gets EOL. And that's a problem for AV installations. Uh, we'll probably agree with that. So at Netgear, it's not true. Uh, the, the lifetime warranty just doesn't stop when the product is EOL. In 25 years from now, Netgear will still stand uh, for, in, in, I mean, on the phone or on the chat or on the uh, uh, portal, and Netgear will still replace next business day any switch because it's covered by a true lifetime warranty. Next business day replacement uh, makes part of that. We have an uh, excellent support uh, crew uh, for uh, uh, chat and uh, uh, phone supports for 90 days, and we have good pro support contracts should our customers want to extend the uh, email and phone support for the rest of the uh, uh, lifetime. Okay. So SDV Alliance, now you know about it. That's a non-profit organization with already 40 vendors. That's a proliferating alliance, but the founding members are shown here. Netgear is the only non-AV vendor. Every, every company is actually in and around the AV or IP uh, industry. Netgear, we just do switches, but we do it right. We just move packets very fast, very rapidly and at the right cost. Uh, Sony is a part of uh, the uh, Alliance as another founding member alongside Christie and ZV. Those three companies actually make AV solutions based on the SDVOE technology. Aquentia and Semtech are chipset and chip vendors. Um, and uh, Netgear, as I said, is dedicated to that technology. We want to provide the backbone Ethernet for that application. So now I hope that you start to understand it. What is important when it comes to select a switching backend for a professional AV, a convergent AVIT installation? Which 
parameters are going to be important so that you select the right switch platform. Is the type of codec or your uh, requirements in terms of quality uh, in a quick second? Is your uh, uh, codec quality um, important? No, it doesn't really matter from this for the switch, right? Because the switch just receives packets, good packets, bad packets, codec or no codec, high quality, low quality, doesn't matter. We are going to move those packets very fast. Second question, is latency uh, going to be important? The answer is no. Your requirements in terms of latency, I can stand latency, I need real-time video, or I can sustain a couple of milliseconds or hundreds of milliseconds of latency, it doesn't matter from a switch backend because switches latency is measured in microseconds, okay? So every hop from one switch to the other will be one or two or three microseconds. That's totally irrelevant for any video transport solution. So codec, quality, latency, it's your choice. You may want to go with the SDBU Alliance technologies for zero frame latency and uncompressed video most of the time using 10 gig, but it's not really uh, a matter from a switching standpoint. The two parameters, the two requirements that will be important will be bandwidth, because obviously, if you go for a one gigabit per second AV over IP installation, you then need one gigabit per second switches. Well, and if you go for 10 gigabit per second AV over IP technology, you will then need 10 gigabit switches. That's obvious, but that's a very important parameter. The second parameter you'll see that is multicasting. Why? Because every single video over IP technology out there with no exception, is based on multicast because it must be. It's one to many. You don't want to inject one to one's unicast video transmissions over an Ethernet network. That would be criminal. So, multicast is a great technology. It's proven robust for 20 years now. It's called IGMP as a protocol. And snooping, query, and fast leave are the three checkboxes you've got to select uh, for any switch installation. Let's see that. Well, the good news is that the 4,300 line of switches at Netgear, one gigabit switches or 10 gigabit switches are already preset for AV over IP because multicast is actually pre-configured out of the box. So the good news is that by going M43 and Netgear, you uh, just make sure that your switch backend will be out of the box available for your AV over IP transport solution and coders, decoders, management platform. It's zero touch because IGMP snooping, IGMP fast leave, IGMP querier, the three mandatory requirements for multicast video over IP are already there, pre-configured, robust for the entire default VLAN one. So you're good to go with the 43s. And the 43s come in a variety of form factors. There's a lot of one gig per second switches that are good for a lot of uh, other AV over IP technologies, as you saw, well, uh, relying on one gig per second. But there is a lot of 10 gig as well. And 10 gig is great, cost effective for SDVoE deployments because only 10 gig Ethernet will give you zero latency, zero frame latency video over IP and uncompressed video most of the time or very lightly compressed with no penalty on latency and no penalty on quality uh, uh, for 4K HDR. So 4300s are actually the switches of choice at Netgear and within the SDVE alliance. Let me uh, give you a quick uh, glance for the uh, line of uh, 10 gigabit switches for SDU installations. We start with a half width, uh, low uh, form, uh, footprint with the half width form factors, 16 port, 24 ports, very quiet, uh, copper and fiber switches, copper and fiber mixed installations, 
It's very practical because you don't really know if you will need fiber or copper, depending on how far are your displays and destinations, for instance. Uh, on the right-hand side, you see bigger models, full width with 24 and 48 uh, uh, port counts, and uh, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on the 96X on the right-hand side, which is very unique because this switch, as you can see here, is totally empty. So, well, there's no point with an empty switch, but the good news is that it's a modular platform, and you can scale by multiples of 8, from 8 to 16 to 24 to 32, up to the 96 port count for great larger uh, uh, AV over IP installations, including copper, fiber, and power, power over Ethernet. So the 96X is uh, another 43 switch, uh, SDVE ready with multicast pre-configured, but the good news is that you can accommodate any scale, almost, up to the 96 port count, for instance, with 48, 48, 48 by 48 uh, installations uh, with eight port base T port cards, eight port fiber port cards, and eight port power Ethernet. 40 gig Ethernet is also available. That's great for assembling several switches in high speed stacks when you want to scale beyond the 96 port, uh, port count. So, uh, that concludes this uh, uh, presentation today. Uh, the goal really was to uh, explain the differences between AV over IP uh, technologies, 1 gig versus 10 gig. We uh, quickly saw that AV over IP over 1 gig per second uh, uh, has a lot of penalties, even if a lot of vendors, hundreds of different solutions are on the market today. Well, it doesn't work very well because you have too much trade-off. And uh, um, uh, latency and quality are the two biggest pain points. When 10 gigabit per second now is very affordable, right? Because any 4,300 Netgear switch will cost around $100 per port, if not less, in distribution. So it means that 10 gigabit is most likely the way to go to really standardize the delivery of AV over IP with a, a latency-free uh, uh, video over IP and the highest quality possible because, well, a video is not compressed at all most of the time and 4K HDR, 4K 4x4x4 is actually lightly compressed using SDVE Pixel pipeline technology for uh, a, a cost of a, a couple of microseconds, totally uh, unnoticeable for uh, the delivery. So thank you for your attention. I want now to uh, show you how you can actually manipulate such a 96X uh, real quick with uh, a 96X-config URL that is widely available on all the Netgear uh, um, uh, collaterals. If you want to uh, play with this and see how you could actually build such a system, don't hesitate. Go to netgear.com slash 96-config. You will maybe answer question, how many 10 gig copper, how many uh, PUE, how many fiber, do you want power redundancy, do you want uh, 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 a service contract for the installation. If you're more like a SE, you may want to directly play with the little plus signs here and populate the chassis, the card frame chassis uh, on, on pair you, your needs. And then you just scroll. It works on a tablet. It works on your phone. It's really adaptive. You will find your bill of material so that you can all go to Ingram Micro and get a quote for it. So the bill of materials is available online. It can be downloaded as a good-looking uh, customer-facing uh, PDF document, or you can download that as an Excel file as well. So uh, 96x-config, if you want to play and design your very own M4396X AV over IP switch. So we are on track for the uh, uh, today's webinar. Uh, we have five minutes left for the uh, quick uh, GUI and CLI demo. Please use the chat box for any questions so that we have some time at the end to answer questions. I already see three or four questions popping up on the chat box that good. 
please uh, continue and go ahead. So I am going to log onto the 96X GUI. Uh, that's a default software, so there's absolutely no configuration in there, so that you can see what is a Netgear GUI that's very consistent across the entire portfolio from unmanaged plus to smart to fully managed solutions. But the 4300s are by far the most fully featured switches out there. The GUI is fully functional. You can actually go from the system standpoint, uh, for instance, uh, looking at the uh, device view, which is a cool feature now uh, on HTML5, right? So there is no more Java uh, applet needed. And the, 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 the device view is pretty cool because you can right click uh, those ports and go all these, uh, see all these shortcuts to the uh, various configuration, the port level configurations you can do on such a switch. But uh, switching is the layer two for VLANs, uh, for multicast, for port configuration, for instance, uh, uh, for uh, link aggregation groups, for uh, um, priority flow control and so on. You have the layer three, that's the third tab for routing with a routing layer three platform, including uh, IP uh, static routing, but also WIP, OSPF, and uh, a multicast uh, PIM routing. Quality of service is another big one. The good news is that you don't need any uh, uh, quality of service uh, div serve uh, strategies for multicast AV over IP because it's built in into the uh, pre-configuration and the uh, multicast uh, uh, preset on the 4300. Security is uh, uh, next for ACLs, uh, network access control uh, uh, authentication. Monitoring uh, is for uh, monitoring the uh, uh, actual traffic ports and so on. When the maintenance will actually, actually let you manipulate the configuration file or reset your switches. So that's the GUI, but uh, if you want to actually play with the uh, command line, you can actually hook a USB cable, download the driver on the Netgear website, and directly connect to the switch console, which is another way of manipulating such a switch. You will uh, actually also be able to use Telnet or SSH remotely using Ethernet. But uh, let me just show you uh, the common line so that you can see how cool it actually is. Uh, just go to enable mode so that you get uh, all the rights. And well, uh, I don't know for you, but for me, the first thing I do when I log onto a such a switch uh, interface, I will say show switch so that it gives me the name of that switch. And uh, another cool one is show hardware so that you can actually see the switch uh, firmware information or the switch serial number. Uh, a third one, very Cisco compliant, isn't it, is the show run. Uh, this one will actually give you the uh, uh, output of the current running configuration you have on the switch, but obviously uh, uh, the entire switch can be either configured through a command line or through the GUI. So let me uh, go back to the point. Let me show you how this switch is actually configured already for AV over IP. So do you remember what's important for any kind of AV over IP installation? It's multicast, right? So multicast is definitely switching at the layer two. Well, even if we could discuss that, because IGMP is more of a layer three protocol, but see, multicast is here at the layer two. And uh, the first thing we want to check is IGMP snooping. So the IGMP snooping configuration is already pre-configured and it's already enabled with all the necessary subcomponents for you. So you don't have to touch that per se for any kind of uh, AV over IP installation because it's already there. Uh, the second thing we want to uh, uh, check is uh, IGMP fast leave and the third thing will be IGMP querier. So bear with me we are going to go first to the VLAN configuration because, you know, between you and me, you may not want to configure uh, those ports one by one, especially when you have 96 ports, right? It's very cumbersome. So another more elegant method for IGMP configuration is at the VLAN configuration. So that at the VLAN level, you just once for all enable for the VLAN one, which is for now your default VLAN, the admin mode, 
enabled for IGMP for your proxy querier and for your fast leave. So all at once, you can see first that it's there. Second, it's actually pre-configured, pre-enabled, even after a factory default. Just for safety check, the querier is actually enabled with a dummy IP address because it's a single switch for now installation. We don't even need to specify anything. And the querier for the VLAN, so the database manager for all these IGMP snooping process is actually already enabled uh, for the participating VLAN one. Okay, so just after that rapid check, you now know that M43 switches at Netgear are ideal for AV or IP because they are actually pre-configured at the VLAN level for IGMP snooping, IGMP querying, and IGMP fast lead. So thank you for your attention today. Uh, if not done already, please urgently go to netgear.com slash sdvue for more information about Netgear and the video or IP technology from SDVUE Alliance. And also visit the 96x-config, netgear.com slash 96x-config to get your hands on that 96x AV or IP switch. So let's uh, please uh, use the uh, chat box for all your questions. I'm going to now uh, review them quickly. I have a uh, first question, thank you. Is the uh, new 96X43 switch really non-blocking throughout the entire port count? Well, that's a good question. If uh, between you and me, any networking vendor out there try to uh, submit a uh, blocking switch for 10 gig Ethernet, that would be criminal nowadays. Uh, 20 years ago, switches used to be blocking somehow, but it's over. So to answer your question, that switch is really lightweight. Uh, this switch is actually uh, 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 coming with 1.92 terabits per second of backplane, 1.92 terabits per second, because you have 96 times 10 960 gig one way and bi-directional on the other way, right? So you need double uh, fabric. So 1.92, it's totally line weight for 96 port of 10 gig and 24 port of 40 gig when you want to populate this big boy with 24 ports of 40 gig. Second question, can I use uh, the 4300s? Yeah, C can the 4300 use the 40 gig ports for stacking and how many of them? Well, that, that's a good question. The answer is yes, we can use any port, any speed, any media for stacking. So you can use any 10 gig ports or any 40 gig ports. And the limit is actually on the 4300 platform as a whole, a 16 port for stacking. So you will then be able in the GUI or the CLI to enable stacking mode on up to 16 port per switch. So 16 port of 40 gig E, for instance, in that instance. Third question, is the software identical for all 43 models? So that's a good question. And yes, that's how you can actually differentiate uh, a family of switches from a uh, whole bunch of different switches. So the 4300 line uh, on the uh, Netgear support website will give you a firmware, a, an image for the latest, which is by now the 12.0.4.9, for instance. And this software is the same across all models. So if you know one, you will then be able to manipulate and manage any other uh, uh, switch, and you can also standardize on such a software because you get only one firmware image uh, to uh, uh, download and to maintain. So that's a much easier solution than a, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a lot of uh, independent standalone uh, switches with a lot of different software. So yes, the 4300 software is really much the same. So I think we covered the three questions. Any other question on the uh, chat? No? 
So thanks a lot for your attention today. Thank you for joining us to learn about Netgear Switching Solutions. Uh, we will uh, send out a, a follow-up email later today, this afternoon or this evening, depending on when you are in the US. And uh, along that email, you'll uh, see a link to the recording of that session and also to the slide deck uh, we uh, uh, used. If you have any questions, feel free uh, to reply to that follow-up email you'll get later today, and we'll connect with you shortly. Uh, we hope you will join uh, next Tuesday at 11 a.m. Uh, California uh, for another webinar that will be how the Insight uh, Smart Managed Cloud Solution, how the Insight Management Solution is simplifying the way small businesses manage their networks. So don't miss the next Tuesday Netgear Insight webinar at 11 a.m. California. Uh, be sure to check out the uh, Netgear webinar schedule on the uh, Partner ProShift portal and all Netgear social channels. If you want to know everything else we have in store for this quarter. So all right, everyone, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye now.